with no further ado, we will open this meeting at 6.30 p.m. This is Monday, September 26th, 2022, and this is the monthly meeting of the City of Sandy Planning <laughs> Commission. Uh, this meeting is being held in hybrid format, so uh, it's via Zoom as well as uh, in person here. We'll begin with roll call. Uh, just to note, Emily, Commissioner Lee is excused due to a sickness um, or an illness. Uh, Commissioner Wagoner? Here. Commissioner Pullen? Here. Commissioner McLean Wenzel? Here. Commissioner Mayton? Here. Commissioner Hook? Here. Chairman Crosby? Here. And to note, uh, Councillor Liaison uh, Sheldon is here as well for the minutes. <laughs> Is, is counselor here on Zoom, did you say? He is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. All right, we had uh, minutes in our packet for the 25th of July, 2022. Anything to add, change, edit? That's for me. Okay, nothing heard then. We, the minutes will stand approved as presented. <laughs> and we will give opportunity at this point for any requests from the floor or from the general Zoom meeting for anybody that's attending that would like to speak to the uh, Planning Commission tonight on an item that is not on tonight's agenda. If you are online with Zoom, click the raise hand button, wait to be recognized. If you're here on telephone, Dial star nine to raise your hand and wait to be recognized. And Kelly will tell us if there's any responders. Um, no, besides everybody in the room, Commissioner Hook, Council Liaison, Sheldon, and staff member Maharg, there's nobody else on currently. We'll move to the director's report that was in our packet. Any questions for Kelly? for clarifications or just general questions? And I did have a few other things to update you on, just so you know. Okay. Um, so the October meeting is tentative at this point. We have, I believe, the Johnson RV canopy cover and State Street Homes. And there's actually another apartment complex for, I believe, 90 units that we just received at the end of last week after I published this director's report. So I believe all three of those will be coming to you uh, this fall or winter, but I don't believe any of them are going to be ready for the October 24th meeting. We're also working on several code changes in addition to the ones that I, you know, in addition to the clear and objective that I listed here. Um, so those will be coming to you this fall and winter as well, although I don't think any of those will be ready for October 24th either. So it's more than likely that the October 24th meeting most likely won't occur. Just so you know, as I put here, there is going to be a joint work session that you will all be invited to on the 7th of November, so the night before the election, which will cover an update on the conference plan, an opportunity for planning commission to give input to the consultant. And then also our transportation system plan finally kicked back off um, after waiting for almost 10 months for the Department of Justice to sign the extension of the contract. Um, so that's top level state government at your finest right there for a $38,000 contract, it took 10 months. Um, so we're back under contract finally, and they're going to be providing an update on November 7th and looking for um, input from the city council and planning commission on priority projects. So one thing that will be happening at Whippersnappers next week at the Future Fest, which I encourage any of you that can attend it's just a drop in event. You could attend for 10, 15 minutes or as long as you'd like. But one thing you will see at the Future Fest next week, if you do join us on Wednesday, is that there'll be a board there for the TSP and our consultant DKS associates will be looking for input from the public on priority projects. So in the next month, we're going to be seeking public input on priority projects at Future Fest, and then also with an online survey with a mapping tool. It's kind of cool. It's going to be launched in the next week or two here, the mapping tool. You're actually going to be able to go on our website and use this map 
and then see all the potential projects and actually add comments to the different projects. It's something unique. I'm hoping it works well. The consultants said it will because they've used it just recently in a couple other communities. Um, and then on the 7th of November with the work session, that will be the opportunity for planning commissioners to kind of officially give their input on those priority projects. And then in addition to all this work, we're also kicking off some transportation SDC methodology work. So typically in the state of Oregon, you adopt your TSP, and this is how Sandy's always done it as well. And then you come back months later with a methodology and a proposal to, to increase the SDCs. In talking to our consultant, Washington, state of Washington, most cities there are now doing them in conjunction. So when you adopt your TSP, you also adopt your SDC methodology update. And what the great thing about that is, then you know with more certainty how much money you're gonna have over the next 20 years. So as far as I'm aware, I think we're this, one of the first ones in the state of Oregon to try it. And we're gonna try to do them in conjunction so that there's not gonna be a year of lag time between when we adopt the new priority list and when we start collecting additional SDCs. And then one last thing I want to update you on is the city council, and I'll be sending out more information on this uh, to the public and also to the commission in the next probably month or so. But the city council has decided to reconsider the Bull Run Terrace application, which was denied, I believe in 2020. Um, the applicant has come back. It's been on stay at Luba for almost two years now. And they have a second application for Deer Meadows also on stay at Luba. So we have two Luba uh, applications cur currently on the same property, which is very rare. But uh, they asked us if we would be interested in pulling the original one, Bull Run Terrace, if they were willing to put a dwelling unit cap. So before there was some uncertainty with how many dwelling units would be there. And that was one of the big concerns that city council had was not knowing how much additional trips were gonna be put onto Barco Road. So now what they're gonna be proposing is a density or a, a dwelling cap of 200 units with how this process works, which I don't think Sandy's ever been involved in this process either, um, is it's called a reconsideration. I can send you the ORS if you're interested. And what it basically does is the city files for reconsideration to Luba, and then Luba temporarily releases their position on it essentially, so they don't rule a decision. It goes back to the local decision makers, the city council. They can either, um, deny it again, or they can approve it or approve it with conditions. So it most likely it'd either be denied again or approved with conditions. And then depending on what happens there, then the applicant can either take that decision or they can pursue their LUBA case. Um, we actually even asked, is there an option to go back to planning commission for a recommendation, but that's not part of the statute. It has to go back to the decision body that denied it. And that in this case is city council. So that's, that's why you, they call this, I think David's referred to it as like the last bite at the apple. That's what they, re, that's what lawyers refer to it at the state level. Um, I, I, I think this is the first time Sandy's done this. As far as I'm aware, you, you might yeah, know, Jerry. No, I've never heard of it. Uh, but I did want to let you all know what's kind of happening. Um, and so that's, that's going to be happening on November 21st, most likely at a city council meeting. Okay. So can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. So in terms of our roles as planning commissioners, can we go to that meeting and speak on our own behalf? Or um, do we not do that because we're on planning commission? Or can we as planning commissioners talk Is and have somebody hearing? go? It's a public hearing. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, and you, I, my general gut feeling is yes. And the reason why is because at this point, you're not part of the decision-making body. Right. Um, okay. We yeah. can always check with the city attorney if you're really interested in digging into it more. Yeah. I could send him an email and ask yeah. him if there's any issue with that. But just my gut feeling on it, I, I don't see how it'd be like a conflict of interest because you're not making a decision on it at yeah. this point. And you can yeah. just do an initial statement saying this is my personal opinion. Right, opinion that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Now, now I, do, I do want to put one caution in there is I do think because one of our commissioners is running for council mm -hmm. and there's a potential that it could get continued beyond the end of December, which I find unlikely, but it could happen. 
that person would probably be best not to comment. <laughs> now, uh, Chris can go and talk or can go and watch the meeting by all means. And I would right. encourage that in case it does go into January. But I, I would say that anybody in that situation probably should refrain from making an official comment. Because okay. if it does, if it was to be extended, then that person should probably recuse themselves. Recuse themselves yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then I will have some other information I'm sharing with you guys on Wednesday. I just want to let you know, but um, I just can't disclose it yet. Um, but it is pertaining to city business. So I'll be sending an email on Wednesday. So you guys will get more information on that. Oh, okay. And then you should it's not, it's it. not about me. It's just about no, like, I just thought it's, it's about general that's, litigation. That's and I just can't share it yet. Are you going to talk to us there? But you should whip oh no in an email. i'll send it in an email on wednesday i just didn't want any of you to be caught off surprise or wonder why i didn't share it tonight mm -hmm. and it's only because it's pending litigation i have to wait until wednesday sure so, so you said whippersnappers was wet was next week but isn't it is uh no wednesday? it's actually two days from two tonight days. uh it's the 28th at 6 p.m and i think we have the venue until 8 30 p.m so you can show up probably anytime between 6 and 8 15 ish um Sure, I got. I have another meeting that night. I have a meeting at seven, but I can come at seven. <laughs> so I won't be. And there. I'm planning on. I wish I could. I mean, if you come at seven, if you if you have kids with you, I, I or not, if you don't have kids with you, I'd recommend coming a little bit later because I think oh. that first hour could be. Oh, cool! A madhouse. Well, it starts at six, though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it's good that I can't come. To yeah, seven. I, I yeah. think so. <laughs> my kids will be down there, so you'll see my kids. My, my spouse is bringing them down there. Um, and I think that's all I had. I, I know it's a lot. The city council did talk about Pleasant Street Master Plan last week too. So I'll be updating everybody on that. And we'll be, because it's been so long on that project, I'm going to be bringing it back to you and getting more thoughts and input and uh, recommendations. You're going to be very involved in that process going forward. Okay. And I, I'll add about uh, the... Uh... The thing Wednesday night, uh, if, if you get there and you, you see a place that needs some help, jump in if you want. Uh, in the, uh, what's the CAC? Is it the community that I'm on? The community uh, advisory committee. Advisory committee. Yeah. yeah, they ask us to, to, if we wanted to, to help out with some of the stations and so forth. So, who knows how busy or whatever, but so we, just to say, if you want to say, hey, I can help. Yeah. So I, I do think it's going to get pretty high attendance. Um, a lot of times at these open house type meetings, it's you struggle to get attendance. I'll just be very honest. So we're trying to come up with a creative way to accomplish two of the hardest things. And that's, uh, you know, when people take couple, an hour or two hours out of their night, the two most common things in planning literature is finding childcare especially for, you know, younger families. And then also, you know, food, if you're having people come at six. So I think we are getting like 25 pizzas and a lot of other stuff and it's free admission for all the kids instead of the typical $15. And then we're going to be, you know, I, I also really wanted to help Hans Whipper out, Hans Whipper out and that business. Cause it's a, I think a really important business in Sandy that was pretty negatively impacted by COVID. So yeah. I think anytime local government can do that, I think it's a win-win for everybody involved. I think it's a wonderful plan. Mm -hmm. Hope it goes very well. <clears throat> All right. Um, just a note, maybe, maybe to Emily as you're taking the minutes. Our our public hearing is listed under Planning Commission discussion. I think it should be under New Business. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch. Yeah, that was an error on my part. I didn't notice it until just now. So we've we've had our discussion, and now we will go to the public hearing. Huh. I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> All right, we will open the public hearing at six forty-five. This is not a file number, but this is the industrial design standards modification. This is a legislative um, public hearing. And the end result is that we will be making a recommendation one way or the other to city council. They will have a public hearing and make the final decision. Okay, so we'll call for any abstentions from the planning commission. 
And I guess uh, for Chris and not Chris, but uh, Stephen and Jan, you'll have to raise your hands or something if you want to um, respond to something. And I'll say now that it is a challenge to keep a meeting going with a third of the people on screen. And, um, and we've got to be careful that we don't forget they're there, uh -huh. and that we uh, uh, remember that. OK, any conflicts of interest? Anybody? And we move right into staff report. So my apologies on that, uh, Chair. Seems like I'm kind of sloppy on this tonight. Uh, it is actually file number 22-025 DCA. Oh, okay. So there is actually a file number. I don't know why I didn't include it on the staff report. All right, well, it's been stated now, so it's in the record. Thank you. So this was actually something I've wanted to change probably for about, going on about 10 years now. Um, so when I started here, this section of the code, which is section 179130, it's part of the Sandy style code. We, uh, you know, my predecessor, Tracy Brown, and I wrote some additional language and inserted it into section 1750, which is the light industrial zoning code uh, standards. And we did that in 2012 with ordinance 201205. And what that did is it increased the landscape buffer around the perimeter of property that's zoned I2. Um, so if you notice one property that this kind of affected was the old bus barn building before it moved across the street. So that was kind of landscaped heavier. And then we also had where Johnson RV is now moving into, but where it was previously, what is it, always towing, I think it was. We had that landscaped uh, beefier. And if you remember, before I worked here even, but if you lived in town, that was part of what they did with Fred Meyer to kind of screen the back of that. And even though that zone C2, it, the, the, it was the same intent was to kind of use a landscape screening to buffer it from the roads. So that, that's why we adopted ordinance 2012-05. The downside to adopting that was for the last 10 years now, this code section has remained, the one you're reviewing tonight. And the unfortunate thing is, as you probably remember, we've had several applications for variances to this code section. And the main reason why, there's two main reasons. And that's mainly because it's more expensive to build or to construct a building under this existing um, design requirements. And it's, it's very atypical of something that is like manufacturing or assembly or warehousing to build something to what our current standards are. So it kind of gives us a competitive disadvantage, just to be honest. Like we've had people come here and look at our code and see what the requirements are and then go to Estacada and see that they can build a metal prefab building. And I think we had at least one business that potentially located down there because of that. So we wanna be more competitive. And then the other issue that this kind of creates is that you're basically, or the code is basically requiring a bunch of things that can never be seen from the road because since 2012, we also now require this vegetative screening. So not only is it a more expensive, more burdensome, design process for a building that really is going to be used for industrial purposes, but also because of the screening requirements that we uh, codified in 2012, after a few years of landscape or vegetative growth, you can't even see the building. So things like uh, the varied visual interest for pedestrians for facade, I don't know who you're really doing that for, except maybe the workers that are coming to the building each day um there's a few other ones like change and relief that are really odd um the alcoves porches and arcades that were encouraged in here and then the most bizarre one is 1791:30 c10 and that goes into traditional storefront storefront elements so it goes into for buildings designed to house retail service or office businesses well there are some offices, but the majority of the businesses in the I-2 zoning district have nothing to do with retailer service. So it's really, it's really an odd code provision to even have. 
Um, it just, in my opinion, it's really a competitive disadvantage to have a lot of these things. It, if you go down, there's some additional stuff on building orientation, entrances, um, having a connection from the right of way to the building interior. But again, you're you have a vegetative screen, so I don't know who you're trying to attract to the building. Um, there's a lot of window requirements. And in talking to a lot of people that are doing manufacturing and assembly and warehousing, they don't want a lot of windows for a couple of reasons. You know, then you can see into the building and usually it's kind of a little disorganized in those facilities and a lot of machinery. And then the other thing is then it just creates kind of a, um, a security risk or issue, especially if you have a lot of very expensive equipment inside of it. Um, so what, what I'm proposing, oh, and then one other thing I wanted to point out, and I'll add what Jan's comment was here as well, is one of the other things that's very burdensome in this code provision, and I think we've approved three separate variances, two on the U.S. Metalworks site, one on the Bull Run Electric site, oh, and then a third one that never got built on the um, Trillium Machinery site. And that's to reduce the pitch of the roof that's required in here from a 312 to a 112. I've talked to architects and other people in the trades, and they don't know of any city that requires a 312 roof pitch in an industrial district. It actually about doubles the cost of the roof to go from a 112 to a 312 because of the, the trusses or the beams that you have to put in there. They're just that much more expensive. Um, and then uh, Commissioner Lee did write me a comment that she did want to point out one thing for the minutes and for the consideration. And she said that we shouldn't allow wood shingles. Um, I 100% agree with her. I'm on the wildfire task force for the state of Oregon. And I believe within the next couple of years, wood shingles in most jurisdictions are going to be prohibited throughout the state of Oregon for fire risk. Um, and so I, I think Commissioner Lee's point is very applicable here that I, I think we should remove that. And, and that, that? That, was, that was added in here by me. Um, it said, it's D4, it said visible roof materials must be wood or architectural. I then added it to say shall be wood shingle or architectural grade. I would propose to strike wood shingle. Right. Uh, the words wood shingle and the word or, I would strike all three of those words. And then the only other thing I was going to point out, or sorry, two more things. Under G, I added in the landscaping requirements. That is, the, it's verbatim from what's in 1750.30C. So I'm just carrying it over to this section so it's in both places. Um, so that if you don't read that chapter, you still know it's a, a, it's a site and building requirement which I think is very important to have it in this section. And then the last thing I was going to mention is uh, David Snyder, economic development manager. He has talked to businesses as well, and he is supportive of these code changes for pretty much the reasons I already brought up. So that's pretty much my summary. I don't know if you have any questions or if any of this is confusing. <laughs> Just to clarify, <clears throat> the... So what we're doing is we're modifying the code for I-2 and also then adding an I-3. Yeah, and that's a, that's a really good point. So currently, if you look at our zoning map, the only area that's zoned I-3 is outside of city limits and it's west of Sabella Nursery. So it's out there kind of towards the sewer treatment plant. If that property was to be annexed in, the difficulty right now in our code is there's no, there's no code, it's silent on how that would have to develop. And so I would I would prefer it just to develop similar to this zone, um, especially now that we're taking away a lot of the or I'm proposing to take away a lot of the burdensome code requirements. Yeah. So currently the code is just silent on it. There's there's no design requirements for I three in the code. Kelly, I had a question on the top of page four. Um, so it would be a G one. B, um, existing trees shall be preserved to the greatest extent possible. I guess I, I just, I'm, where's the meat in that? How, who decides what's possible? Yeah. It's I mean, it seems to me whenever 
it's just open like that, then what's possible is what's easiest for the developer, which is to mow everything down. So I'm just wondering. I mean, it's a really valid point. Um, it does create a potential issue if staff disagrees with the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, just to remind everybody, this, this doesn't have to be cleared objective just in case you're wondering, because it's oh. not residential land use. Oh, <laughs> so that's half my marks. <laughs> yeah, so a criterion like that with okay. our clear and objective audit, that would never pass like must. I would say, let's get rid of that. you like, that does not work. But for this, actually, uh, in the I-2 and I-3 zone, there isn't even a residential as a possibility. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be clear and objective. Now we could make a clear and objective if we want to, um, but there's no legal requirement to do so yet. Okay. Well, we'll move on to public testimony and then we can come back to our discussion, our, okay. our non-public uh, discussion. So we will, we will just open public testimony for a random one. I'm not gonna call for uh, positive, negative, just um, give testimony. And again, if you're on Zoom, click the raised hand button. If you're on the telephone, it's star nine to be recognized. So at this time for anybody that may be in our listening world audience that would like to speak to um, this public hearing and what's being proposed, uh, do so now. You still don't have any attendees. So besides the people I listed. All right, we're gonna, don't anybody take it personal. <laughs> All right, um, and there's probably no need for staff recap and recommendation. Um, we can go ahead and close the public hearing since there's nobody here to talk to, and then we can talk. Chair, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Well seconded. Been moved and seconded to uh, close the public hearing at 6:57 p.m. All in favor, say aye. 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 Or thumbs up. I can't see Scott. There's the yeah. Well, we have a majority here anyway. You <laughs> got the card. All right. Discussion. Like as, as soon as you said, then it'd be clear and objective. I right? was half the things that I I had um, <laughs> highlighted. Um, yeah. Just let's just do it this way. If you if you've highlighted things, we'll just kind of go around. And I just have a couple now that I got rid of all my clear and objective ones. Um, on, um, on, fu on future code provisions, I'll try to put that into as part of the analysis, whether it needs to be clear and objective or not. That'd be helpful. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll try I to just that. thought I'd read something about that it had been reviewed by somebody for clear and I must have been reading something else. No, it was for this. We got their input just because they're looking at our entire code. Oh, okay. And they actually did find a few things that we, like it was really worth having them take a look at sure, it. Sure. Um, just for my own ed education, D, let me see, this would be, yeah, D, there's just D5, all roof and wall monitor mechanical electrical communication service equipment, including satellite dish and vent must be screened from public view. My question is, and there's probably a definition, where's the public view? Is that like, right next to the building on their property or is that off property i don't know if our code defines public view or not it's it's mentioned several times in chapter 17. so if it doesn't define it we should definitely define it through the clean objective audit let's see. Let's see if it's happening. Well, i think it makes a difference you know because some things if you're behind on uh, which side of the screening you're standing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know if you're on an adjacent street. Mm -hmm. So public view is not defined in our code. So we would, and then when that's the case, then we have to go to the dictionary and define each word individually. So we'll probably want to add that as a definition. And I mean, we can modify this too, but mm -hmm. that's a good thing to add there. My other comment was, or thing, um, F, one, this is just more technical writing. <clears throat> it says, uh, ends with them painted or darkly tinted glass shall not be used. And then when I read that uh, a couple of nights ago, 
different. Wait, I saw the word prohibited someplace else. And I'm just curious, is there's a reason why we say prohibited someplace and shall not be used others? Is it a good idea to be consistent? That's just an I, observation. Yeah. It's really not a. I think C is where it says prohibited and it's struck out. F to C. Is that the one you're talking about? I thought, no, I thought it oh, was it was in one that was uh, proposed. I like the I like the term are prohibited better. Mm -hmm. So if you if you were fine with removing the last four words of that sentence and putting are prohibited, I would prefer yeah. that actually. Yeah, no, I saw it in C three where it says vertical group T one eleven sheet siding is prohibited. That's what's Struck in my mind because my house is made of T one eleven. And there may be other places where it says shall not be used. But um, my last question. So I mean, would you like me to change that? That I'm more than happy to change that. As far as I'm concerned, yes, because okay. it's consistent and like you, like you said yourself, it, it kind of has a little bit more punch to it mm -hmm. and it's less words. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, G, D. My question was, the screening requirements can be met by an off-site screen. Would that just be something that's on somebody else's property that would be a, acting like a screen? Or is it something yeah, they're so that, responsible for? I think Tracy actually wrote that, Franklin, but I think, I think his point is actually a really good one. So if you have a hot, I think, yes. And I think the reason why is Highway 26. So if you have Highway 26 like this running through town, And say here's like Champion Way here, it kind of comes up. And then here's Industrial. Here's here's Fred Meyer right here. There's some properties over here that are zoned industrial that you can see from the highway. Mm -hmm. So I think the thought was is because we have such topo topographic changes that there could be properties where the best screening. The best way to screen them is not actually right against the property, but from like another vantage point. I think that's what he was trying to get to at there. Yes, I think that it yeah can be met by an offsite screen. So this mm -hmm. would be say you're trying to screen this property, can be met by an offsite screen, and say right here is the better spot to screen it. So it could be anything. We typically think of screening as being vegetation. But in this case, could be buildings. Um, I don't think so because the first part of that says um, all buildings that are visible from a collector, arterial, or highway shall be screened from view by a vegetative screen, vegetative buffer as specified below, and then that's one of the specifications. Okay, so it has to be. So it would have to be something vegetative <laughs> back there in that line that you drew. Yeah. So Fred Meyer couldn't be the screen, for instance. Uh, I don't think the building itself could. Now with how the code's currently written. So I guess one concern I had about that was if it's offsite, because I, I read that and I was like, so if we're relying on offsite screen for something that somebody's building, then what's to keep that screen from being mowed down later, right? Very little. Exactly. The, the, the one thing in this though, that is kind of a catch 22 is it says, if the property does not abut a collector street, arterial street or highway. Okay. Currently all of our industrial I2 zones, the only streets they abut are collectors, arterials or the highway. Uh, so I was talking to Emily about this this morning actually, and she brought up the good point that it might not be a bad idea to add local because there could be a land division in the future that makes a local street. Mm -hmm. And then one of these could abut a local street as well. And you'd probably want the same standard. Right. So I do think her point's really valid that yeah. we probably should add that. Yeah. 
because even I think it was written when Tracy wrote this, I think in, he looked at where they were located and it's correct that currently there is no local street. So, but just thinking out into the future and with free zones and everything, you never know. Um, yeah, and I, and I think your point, uh, Commissioner, is really a good one, is that I think if we rely on this kind of standard too much, then it becomes very hard to enforce. Right. I mean, it's just when I was reading it, I was thinking about, you know, this, the whole thing going on, you know, that we talked about with the Mount Hood, um, with all of the new uh, food carts. Mm. And like, what happened to the trees <laughs> that were supposed to be there and protect? And it's like when, when things pass through different ownerships, um, some of these protections get lost. And so that made me think, well, if it's not on the property to begin with, that could be said hard to enforce and speaking of screening that that you were asking about the trees that's repeated in 175030 it's the the i2 industrial requirements it's just copy it out of there and paste it onto that new thing. so it lines up and that leads to my question for you so i, I saw you where you, you try to make them all line up but did we go backwards to see if any of the any of this is going to change those two sections um 50 and 52 because I, I saw things like the screening, we were literally just cut cops in pace, but I was wondering if any of the other changes you made were gonna affect either one of those two subchapters. Um, not that I know of. It, it probably would be good in the future to either, either remove that part of 1750 or to add it also to 1752. But we weren't proposing that at this time. I, I mean, there's there are only a couple of pages, and I was just screening. I didn't see anything substantive or substantive that was going to be a difference. I just wanted to make sure somebody had reviewed it. Yeah, I, I did look at them. I didn't see anything that I was concerned about. But if you see anything, let me know for sure. Yeah, and so far, just to answer this, also is that D. I've I've never seen anybody use that. Um, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they can't currently because, all like I said, all the property abuts a collector or arterial or highway, so you can't even use that provision yet. Other input questions observations. Uh, my only other thought with this is, I mean, it applies to both I-2 and I-3. I mean, I look at, uh, well, whippersnappers, that area there is zoned I-2 and has essentially, it is now a pretty nice strip mall as far as a nice, you know, variety of businesses in there. You know, you got uh, the new uh, throwing place, you got a kid's place, you know, you got lots of cars coming and going in there, uh, lots of customers. Um, and while I definitely get the intent of this is to kind of make those buildings cheaper and easier to build to attract folks, I think there is a reasonable expectation that customers will be going into these uh, places, even though they can't see up in the street. Um, is there a way that maybe we can enhance part of it, like the entrance, at least differentiate it, you know, because right now we're looking at, according to the entrance standards, they could have a kind of a plain white door with a metal awning, you know, and that's as fancy as we get, you know, um, but at least for folks who go in there, maybe have something that kind of uh, stands out a little bit. So that one's really unique. So I, I don't know who was on the commission. I know Jerry was, uh, but that particular site actually has an approved uh, zoning district modification pending the buildings being upgraded. And so if you go in there, the, the original building, the foundry building, he's putting all new roof, all new siding, all new entries on that. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be carried over to all those buildings. Okay. And then once that's all complete, then the ordinance goes into effect and it becomes I-1. So that one's actually, um, that one, at least in the context of this is not a great case study because he's actually gonna, that's part of the, that was part of the trade-off of allowing him to put all those different use types in there, like whippersnappers, axe throwing place before, before that it was Bunsen Brewer. Right. And the trade-off was that he was going to upgrade all the buildings, make them look more like Sandy style 
and then we were going to allow him to go to I-1. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah, it was and a long then, time coming. It was, and then the council just gave him a five-year extension about a year ago because um, it's just taking a long time for him to finance it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is literally, literally replacing the entirety of the outside, mm -hmm. the roof, all the siding, all the windows, all the doors, and upgrading it. So, mm -hmm. um, but to answer the second part, I mean, my intent was to make it um, as cost effective as possible to build these buildings so that we can hopefully encourage um, job creation and growth. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my thought was not to make any obstacles to that. I mean, with a very few exceptions. So, um, but if you want to propose beefing up the entries, we certainly could add that back in. I mean, I'm open to what the commission is, yeah. but I would be open, you know, I'm not thinking anything crazy fancy or anything, but, you know, maybe require a window or, you know, some kind yeah. of architectural just detail around there just to. I actually, I had the same thought was um, just even just an awning and some detail around the door just to have a, I mean, an entrance is so much and and not not doing a lot, not requiring a lot, but especially where we live. I mean, having the awning. <laughs> well, I think the awning is required. Yeah, yeah. the awning it's is. It's a five foot, foot awning. Five foot oh, yeah, that's right. But um, I think a little bit of detail. I, you know, it's it's funny whenever I go to the leather, the Shell station coming into town, and you're getting your gas, and that entrance way is just so nice. I mean, it's like, yeah, we're in Sandy. <laughs> So I don't know that mm -hmm. I would, I, it doesn't have to be that fancy, but. Well, since we, it doesn't have to be clear and objective. We can encourage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. We, we may not have to, we don't, one, one possible path, because I agree. I mean, it would be nice, but to get into some uh, a, a highly refined the way Sandy code is or Sandy style that you have to have this, that is mm -hmm. an articulation and all this and so forth, that it could be somehow written to encourage um, public public entrances. I don't know, I have no idea how to word it, but public entrances is really what we're talking about, mm -hmm. not not a garage door for equipment to come in right. and out of or or employees, but Public entrance be <laughs> something pretty a nod, right? to, <laughs> you know? a nod to Sandy Star. Since it doesn't have to be clear and objective, man, we could go wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go too wild because then we can't interpret it. <laughs> I mean, would it be yeah. enough to just say that it clearly designates it as the public entrance or something that separates yeah. it apart from, you know, an employee entrance or? I mean, you know, given what you said about the cost of the roof, I mean, and and windows and things, there's we're taking away a lot of things that cost a lot of money. So asking that, you know, the main door, the main public, what could be a, a public interest entrance. It's funny. I've gone down into the industrial district to like get something, a window. And the doors are so nondescript. There's all these white doors. You don't even know where you're going. I mean, yeah. it's really easy to kind of get lost down there. Am I stepping into the break room? Or? Right, right. <laughs> it's it's that it's that um, unuser friendly for for public to come in there. So just Thoughts? just playing the other advocate here. Okay. <laughs> doesn't doesn't the B uh, B1, special attention shall be given to design a primary building entrance that is both attractive and functional. Um, and that's very subjective to what attractive mm -hmm. is and, and functional, but it gives the, you know, it gives, I guess, credence to what we're saying is we yeah. want them to pay attention to it, but we're not so specific. And, and then I'll back up and say, go to C1 that's been striked out there for facades. And when I think of a facade, I think of a, the the street facing of the building. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the fact that um, it gives an option for it to be varied and articulated to provide visual interest to pedestrians. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that by leaving that language in C1 causes any demise because it just, it's kind of, um, 
at least from my lens, it's it's telling the the builder to pay attention to detail on the front of the building. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Um, but just just my except thought. that it the way it's written does introduce cost with the articulation shall be varied and articulated. Yeah, and the second sentence is the real problematic one. Which I've which I've had people ask me about an exterior finishes shall create the appearance of several small buildings. And I'm okay with striking that. <laughs> I don't even know what that means really. But... Well, that's what we used uh, for Fred Meyer. Got them, they they broke up the, the mm -hmm. look of their and it was really helpful there. Um uh, thanks for pointing us to uh, mm -hmm. to B1 because it we would have the opportunity with that to come back and say it's not it's not attractive right yeah it's not functional mm -hmm. i don't know what functional is i mean a door all they have to say <laughs> is that it's a door you know how more functional do you want to get but um attractive is um, works for me at least it's it's mentioned there so they're kind of uh, the, the designers on alert. I need I need to give some difference or attention to this entrance. Mm -hmm. Could we say something where it's not holding them to Sandy style by any means, but but you know just like with a nod to Sandy style. So relating to so both attractive and functional relating to the Sandy style. You could yeah. put an EG in something there. Something like that. Yes, that, I EG like that. at the end, in parentheses, EG Sandy, Sandy style. style. So it's not something that's going to be enforced in detail or anything, but that. I don't have to have a timber cross frame, but they would be better. They could do something. Pardon? <laughs> they don't have to have a timber cross frame, but they could do something a little better than a five foot awning. Yeah, <laughs> metal a metal. Yeah. yeah. My other, I guess, concern with. This I think again. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, in a lot of these buildings, they're built. They have one entrance, or and then they're subdivided. So even if you have a building that subdivided is the primary entrance, just one of the entrances on the biggest unit, or uh, each, each be unit. divided up into each unit if they built it subdivided. Mm. I mean, did we want to change that to something like a public building entrance, or building oh, entrance yeah. to the public, or something along those lines? So every entrance that's public that's facing. Public, public so it, it might read special attention shall be given to designing any public building entrance. Yeah. That is both attractive, attractive and functional, e.g. sandy style. I like that. Yeah. I support that. So yeah. Otherwise, yeah, they could build a huge building and say that's the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the main door when in fact it is. It does. Yeah, there. they've got four businesses with four more doors down the way. That also kind of gives that breakup of a big long building. Also, oh, yeah. That would definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be a lot more attractive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the hard part about referring to it as public is um, they might argue that the building is not available to the public. But if it's been That's... used in all the ways that you, that like the, what was the Budson burner or the Looper Snappers, all those, they are, they were, did end up being used by the public. How, how yeah, else this... do you define it? Because I'm thinking of, okay, if a business is there, I may not have occasion or reason to go there, but salesmen are coming there. Suppliers are coming there. So they're not public. I don't Primary know. entrance will be defined in our code with a clear and objective audit. Could we define it for like a primary entrance for each unit? Uh, potential. So the other hard part is when you're building a building, the use might change over time. Mm -hmm. So say they build it for X use and that doesn't have a public entrance, but then the next person that leases that portion of the building or that building then it is available to the public. Primary unit or primary entrance per unit. 
you could yeah you could do primary building entrance for each unit or each yeah each leasable area within the building or something yeah do we and it's just a question do we care about the public entrance if it's on the back of the building not facing the street or do we care just about the facade of the building that's facing the street that's got the you know where the pedestrian and the vehicle access looks at it because yeah, public not, facing yeah, or I'm, public yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. not I'm not as interested in what's behind the building if that's the entrance to the building as I am if it's what's on the front of the street that we we pass by that you may or may not see because of screening. <laughs> well, <Right. laughs> for me, I mean, ignoring the use case of the building for a second, you know, let's say you do have an industrial park that's set up similar to the way that that whippersnappers, you know, area is those parking lots wrap around right and so what's the front of somebody else's, you know, unit. You turn around or you look to the side it's actually the back of the next building the back of the other side. you know and so even though it's kind of the back of a building it's easily seen from a lot of those different spots do we have do we have i2 i3 in downtown that's the only areas that you have i2 are in the hole down there yeah, off ruben yeah, lane off ruben, right. and then south and then on industrial and champion those are the only two areas. And then eventually we'll have I-3 somewhere else, probably west of town. But we don't have much industrial right now. As you'll see with the um, EOA that will be coming out in the next few months, I've reviewed that less than 20% of the people that are employed in Sandy work in Sandy. So that's a problem. <laughs> that's like a really bad number to have. So that, that's one of the intentions here is trying to increase the appeal of industrial development. Mm -hmm. But but as we as the commercial gets built out, we don't want, I mean, then if they start using industrial to do commercial work, but it's like it's in the industrial and then it's not having to conform to look nice that kind of defeats Sandy style. I mean, because we've only got so much commercial land, right? And then we've got... I mean, you all have a lot of commercial land opening with 360 second bell now. Okay. Oh, if you go out there and take a tour, it is a that's lot true. of land. Okay. I mean, I you'll see in the OA, I, I wouldn't be overly concerned with commercial in the future because there's a lot of projections that a lot of what's used as commercial right now is going to go away over the next 20 years yeah. with continued presence of online sales mm -hmm. um, and also with more people working from home mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of projections out there that the amount of commercial is going to not dry up but it's not going to be in demand like it was you know 30 or 40 years ago Sense. Okay. Well, Kelly, can we put something in there to um, what Commissioner Regner said about the individual entrances being separated with some wording? Yeah, so how I have it written now is special attention shall be given to designing a primary building entrance for each unit within a building that is both attractive and functional. And I'll tinker around with that a little bit and get some more input, but that's what that's I was what thinking. Were, that's what I, yeah. or then, then add the EG standy, standy oh, style yes. in and parentheses. Then, right. I do have that at the end as well, correct. Okay. And then what about the facades, the, the C1, about keeping the first sentence and getting rid of the rest? You have that all stricken. So are we saying we don't care what the front face of the building looks like any, any longer? Because it could be big. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> and, and, and that's where the cost is going to come yeah. in. I mean, that's what we want is a 100,000 square foot manufacturing yeah. industry. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Right. As a city planner, that's what I want to see move in here. One big end. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to see a Walmart a really or a Target. Nice I want to see somebody, yeah. <laughs> somebody that pays forty bucks an hour move in. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it struck. 
I mean, I understand, yeah. I understand what um, your concern, but I, I don't know that there's a middle ground for it. I just thought I would throw the question out there because it's, no. yeah. it's uh, we love it. Part, part of me, I, I'm, I'm an advocate for bringing business into safety. <laughs> and I, I know that the easiest way to do that is to make it cheaper uh, for them to design. But I also, as a, as a, a big proponent of our Sandy style mm -hmm. and keeping mm -hmm. us looking the way we, we right. are, right? Or, well, and if you look at communities, and I mean, we had this discussion back when Sandy style was adopted, you know, places that have that have a style, whether it's Sisters or Bend or Cannon Beach or whatever, they actually end up growing more because they're nice. Right. Like so, mm -hmm. but I do I do hear the need to loosen it for for the industrial. I, I just don't want to lose too much. I just wonder where the language there. It says facades shall be varied and articulated, provide visual interest to pedestrians. There's nothing in there that says that it, it's going to cost more to build in my lens. It just says that you need to, you know, make that front different than the back sides, back and sides. Um, that typically does come with more cost, but we're not telling them what they have to do other than use the building materials that are already there. <laughs> but I, I can, I can hear your point. I'm, I'm indifferent. I can go either way. I just want to bring mm -hmm. up a discussion. No. <laughs> and not that we could legislate it, but we have had some developers lean towards Sandy style voluntarily. Mm -hmm. um, again, we can't legislate it. Can't say that it will, it would happen, but be poor planning to depend on it. But I guess my, I would also add if they didn't want to do that, if it was that big hundred thousand square foot building Kelly's talking about, couldn't they ask for a variance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. To not have to build that way. Mm -hmm. And I mean that 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 goes against what you know Kelly was mentioning at the beginning. Mm -hmm. you know, that's making a hurdle for them, which add costs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yeah, just things to think about. Is there a simpler way of of like keeping mm -hmm. that? that facade piece but just making it very simple so it's just kind of drawing it to their attention but also loosely enough holding it loosely enough that it's not seen it i mean it's something that that they could talk to staff about and say so what all do you really mean with this and if it's not required most people are probably not going to do it because it's just going to add costs for both designing it and then also constructing, and then also for their property taxes. Mm -hmm. So all three of those things kind of, you know, it gets you on the design and then it gets you on the construction costs. And then when you get taxed, the county tax assessor sends over a rep. They look at the all the plans down here for like hours on a table mm -hmm. and they, the cartographer or whatever they're called, and they sketch it all out and that's how they determine property value. So any little things you add in, it definitely increases your taxes. So if you make it look nicer, it's gonna cost you more. Definitely does. Mm -hmm. So you look at it as what is the value of the structure, and if it looks nicer, it definitely has a higher property value. We want the value to be inside the building. Okay. What it what it brings to Sandy. I mean, that's that's what I want for this for this session, session right. for I two. Yeah, I2, right, I2, right, right. <laughs> for I two. I mean, if you, if you remember the U.S. Metalworks buildings, they're relatively small. Like for Sandy standards, not small, but. The biggest one I think that Lyle Drucker built down there was 30 or 40,000 square feet. So about an acre. Uh, the Fred Meyer building by comparison, I think is about 180,000 square feet. And if you go back there onto US Metalworks site, it is a square building with two awning, but it, but it serves the purpose of an industrial mm -hmm. warehouse okay. is what it is. Yeah. So, and he, and he did them with earth tone colors, like the building's not like something crazy. So. Um, and then if you go on industrial Kyle Ruthard's building, which is the brand new red building there that you can kind of see from the highway a little bit too. That's the bull run, right? It is. Yeah. And his is a little bit, his has some articulation. It has more windows, more vibrant colors, mm -hmm. but that's also three different rentable unit spaces. And he wanted it to be more attractive for people he's leasing it to. Right. Not for, not for customers really, but 
just mm -hmm. to kind of have a little bit more of an upper end build, industrial building. Yeah. But those are two of your most recent cases of industrial buildings in town. I think I could take or, or leave it. Uh, for me, I guess, if I had to pick a fear with eliminating it, even though we have the screening, my fear is that we end up with a giant metal walled building, right? Just a cheap prefabricated metal wall building. You know, if it were to be honestly done in masonry, stone, stucco, or wood, or composite siding, I'd probably be okay with, you know, just the way that that looks in general, is just that metal siding on a giant wall, you know, with nothing else on it. That would be uh, my fear of what would come out of striking. It's going to be a metal building. <laughs> it's number one, right? It is going to be you know? metal. The metal buildings now don't have to look like that either. The metal yeah. buildings can yeah. look like stone. They can look like they yeah. put them through machines and they tweak them to look a lot better than a lot of siding. Yeah, so, I so mean, at least on the facade. It's more expensive. Yeah. But... Mm -hmm. I mean, what you're likely going to see is a metal, a CMU block, or a tilt up concrete. Tilt Although that doesn't really become popular around here yet, but in other parts of the country, that's what they're doing. The tilt up country, yeah, they're having an entrapped up quite a bit because it, it, it lasts way longer than yeah. anything else. Yeah. So, yeah, other, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I, I looked in the definitions, we do not define facade. Oh, we, we don't because so that should be another I was one. trying to put. see is facade just the front? What does it mean, or does it just mean what your eyes see, regardless of whether you're on the back side or the left side mm -hmm. or front? But no, it's not defined so. As you probably realize, our definition section needs a lot of help. <laughs> well, the definition of facade, though, itself is the face of a building, especially the principal front that looks onto the street. Are we OK? <laughs> sure, I have one more question, sorry. Well, let's 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 kind of come to any sort of consensus mm -hmm. or enough to give. Um, oh, on on that C one on on the on the facade issue, because uh, I I think where we're going to to um, end up, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but as as uh, Kelly mentioned in his report, our kind of our two options for tonight is just to forward it on to city council with tweaks and so forth or give it back to staff and have them bring it back to us before it goes to city council. I'm getting the feel that I already see heads going <laughs> that our, our desire yeah. is to is to move it along. Yeah. So with with as many um, suggestions that we have. So with that said, Chris, you had something. I just want to make a uh, clarify and I've lost my spot now. Um, <laughs> it was it was um, it was those shingles again. Oh, there it is. Number four, D4. So roof materials, and we we talked about not having wood shingles, right? Right, mm -hmm. and in there you you've stricken that. So it will say visible roof materials shall be architectural grade com composition shingles, slate, concrete, tile, or metal. Right? Yes, correct. All right, thank you. Yeah, I, I think Jan's point is spot on, or Commissioner Lee's, and it like I said. It, Based on my work on that committee, where Sandy's not, gonna, we're not even going to be able to put wood shingles within a year or two. Like it's not going to be an option. It's going to be mandated through state building codes. We're not going to. Nobody's going to be allowed to do that. Everything else was attacked for me. Yeah. I mean, is there any way on the facades thing to? Um, I think the first half, not the second half, mm -hmm. the first half of C5 kind of gives better guidance than I think one does. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's talking about when facing a public street or a residential development, and it gives a percentage. I mean, to me, that first sentence would be better than the first sentence in one. Like to a minister. Mm -hmm. I would support that. Yeah. yeah I would support that. Not the second sentence in five, though. I mean, I don't think it really is needed, but what? we can yeah, leave I, it. I would agree, but I'm thinking of cases with the residential development. It's, it's, I can show you where it is. If the side of a building faces the back of houses, 
residential development is backed into it. City's houses. I'm pretty sure this is what it was applied, what it was meant to be apply. It's, but when we applied Lyles, he made the argument there's a big green belt, so we did apply it, but I think that's what it was intended to, and potentially over here too with those new houses. So like double green states is here, and then it's the subdivision of the West, off to Marco. I think that's what the code's talking about. Or it could be, it actually could be from the whole too. You do have some housing over here. Up on the hill. Yeah. Although it's like way below the house. Right, that's good. Like way below, below grade, right. Right, like 50, 60 feet down. Yeah, is it important whether it's the back of the house or the front? I don't it's know. almost always going to be the back. Well, most likely. There aren't. Any. Yeah. <laughs> Build your houses looking over this industrial <laughs> building. <laughs> I mean, with the new duplex rules. <laughs> Could happen. It yeah. could happen, but yeah, it's very. I think it's <laughs> unlikely, but. Mm -hmm. Well, just from orientation, that one says you're going to have a change of ten percent at least on that on the facade. Uh, and that's all I was looking for is something that makes the street or us looking better mm -hmm. than the rest of the building, even if it's a yeah you know a a minor modification. Yeah, yeah. Right. Something like that, where that this this percentage is kind of bumped out. And he's kind of sit back or vice versa. Yeah, exactly. But even in a 10% of a 200 foot building, there's 20 feet. Right? Yeah. So it it's breaks it's, the and it's that doesn't have that much cost, I don't think. No. And more than likely, I would think it would be put by a door because mm -hmm. yeah. it makes sense. Right? Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So that is. Or they paint a stripe around the top of that tilt up concrete wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a real thick stripe. A really thick stripe. A belly band. <laughs> so we're we're suggesting or recommending the reintroduction of C5 first statement through the words residential development. I mean you could you could leave the second sentence. I it's up to you guys. I mean, I was just pointing out I don't think you have to, but you could leave it. I, I just felt it was, it's a little too descriptive if we're trying to, you know, be enticing. Yeah. yeah. Let them tell me what they're going to do. Yeah, because they could just be very simple and just pop it out 12 inches mm -hmm. and keep the same metal side yeah. on it. Right. I agree. Yeah. Okay. You're saying okay. Yes, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Strike it. Strike the second sentence. So I'm adding the first sentence back in. Okay. As written, right? Yes. yes. So that would be that would become C3. Uh it would. Yeah. Yeah, and then the next, yeah. So I, any, reorder. I haven't seen any raised hands, and uh, Kelly hasn't learned to me, but Stephen and Jan. Uh, Jan's on. Jan's oh, on. Oh, okay. I thought she was. No, no, no. Okay, Stephen. Any, any comments or responses to anything we've said? No, I've been following along, and uh, it's it's been a, a good discussion. Uh, nothing further to add. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are we ready to wrap this up? I can go through my notes, although Kelly's been taking good notes. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I'll go through what, what my notes are for adding or whatever, and then y'all can follow me and correct me. But I have under uh, B1, we worked on that sentence, and I think Kelly repeated it to us and had it Nailed it. And C5 would become C3, the first sentence. I just have a note on the bottom of page two, uh, D5, about defining public view. 
And I don't know that may be yet beyond the scope of this, but it's maybe just that it'll be in the clear. I'll mention it to the clear and objective auditors that we need to add that as a definition. Okay. And then in let's see, this would be D. Wait. Oh, back over. Okay. F one replace shall not be used with prohibited. And then G one D adding local street. Is that I think I was going to add it to G1 also, because it mentions it there too. Okay. If you're fine with that. Yeah, that's all I have from my page flicking, flipping. So what what I miss? The only thing I had with that in addition to those was the wood shingle strike from Jan. Oh yes, that's yes. All I have to. On uh, D four four. And then I did have some information on E, but I believe you were satisfied once we looked at B again about the entrance being upgraded. Yeah. Okay, so I believe that it would be a motion to forward to city council with our suggested edits. We forward this on to city council with our suggested edits. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to forward it on to city council with our edits, and we'll take a roll call vote. Okay. Commissioner Wegener? Aye. Commissioner Pullen? Aye. Commissioner McLean Wenzel? Aye. Commissioner Mayton? Aye. Commissioner Hook? Aye. And Chair Crosby? I guess, yes. I want to say yes, but it, everybody, everybody was I saying I. Right. Now, just a question for um, procedural. With, with our edits, will they just be in like, and the planning commission suggested this, or do you incorporate them in and then that goes to the city council? How does that work? Um, typically, I incorporate, I'll just modify what I had proposed to you, and okay. then the proposal will see, I'll just, I'll. I'll probably just say that these are the staff recommendations with further amendments from planning commission. Okay. Um, if there was something like really critical or some big section you wanted to add in or delete, then I'd probably mention planning commission. But with what you changed tonight, I, I don't think I'm gonna do that most likely. Very well then. Um... And just so you know, I don't know when this will be going before the city council yet. I don't, I don't have an agenda spot for it yet. Okay. Well, if there's no further discussion, we've accomplished our business. We will be adjourned at 743.